Bum 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 Oh, fuck. You know, hard, hard times, you know, the, lock, the lockdown's been... You know when you used to go in, a, you used to like go in a bar, and the demographic of females, like, like if it was a shit bar and they were all ugly, then you just you just lose, you just you like move the point system, wouldn't you? So the hottest girl would be the ten. Yeah, normal ten wouldn't be a normal ten. Yeah, yeah. Whoever's in there. So like lockdown, like literally, I'd rim predator. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we're at right now. I thought you were in a loving relationship. Yeah, I'm just saying metaphorically, you know. <laughs> as, beautiful, as beautiful as Alice is, I've seen that bitch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. Uh, right then. You you get get it, we're all red-blooded men. Sometimes you look at something and go, that's really ugly, but I haven't seen that vagina. <laughs> so that's like a seven right away yeah and now like you know like you're just like looking at bus drivers like how you do <laughs> i think that's the perennial dissatisfaction of being a man yeah i know and anyone who says that that's not happening oh, you know i only ever look at the bullshit to me you've got a penis all right <laughs> the only thing that you can promise to your loving relationship is you're not going to put it in anything <laughs> that's the challenge and that's the you know that's the thing don't get me wrong i don't like absolutely don't advocate cheating i think cheating is weak as fuck um i think like if you want to go and bang loads of birds then just be single if you need the support of another person to like you know like to make you feel okay and then go and bang i think you're a fucking bad end basically it's just fucking greedy in it it's just fucking um, greedy yeah, but also, like, that's another person you're dealing with. And so, yeah, I've never... I'm not into that. I think that's bullshit. So plus, just bit... plus, you could never cheat on Ellis because you're punching, so... Well, yeah, I could never cheat on Ellis because I look like a bag of smashed anchovies. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, she's pretty safe. <laughs> Are you, on the other hand? Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> me, on the other hand, she's getting fucking blue tip DMs and just... <laughs> Just surveying her option. <laughs> <laughs> Clutching on to straws then. Yeah, I know, mate. Well, you know, she's she's always said she'd leave me if it wasn't for the dogs. Well, well, just keep the dogs then. Better yeah, keep no. them healthy then. Yeah, I know. They don't live forever though. <laughs> don't, let, don't let don't let them drown. <laughs> yeah, fucking hell. The new that, that's why you that's why you jumped in after them the other day. <laughs> yeah. <No! laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't about the dogs. About me. Alice. I just watched my vagina like drowning. I was like, no. <laughs> no, I can't let this happen. <laughs> Welcome back to episode 31 of Bash Bros Podcast. Um, this week we have a slightly different guest to what we would normally have. He's not an IFBB pro, he's not a competitive bodybuilder as such. He's he trains to a, a good standard. But Kyle uh, Bulldog, Mentality Williams, um, he's a, um, what do you call it, a mindset coach, Kyle? It's a, a mindset coach. So it's like a, it's like a life coach, but it, yeah, I, I, I've named him mindset coach. I'll yeah. explain why. I'll explain everything why. Yeah, so, so, so the reason we had Kyle on this week was the original intention when we started this podcast was to have um, an element of mental health and, um, you know, it, it kind of came off the back of when Luke passed away. Um, and um, we've kind of come away from that a little bit with all the high profile guests that we've had. Um, so and because, and because Ryan left. <laughs> yeah, and because Ryan left. Um, he was beyond help there. He was the, emo he was, he was the emotional roller coaster sort of leading the way with us. Yeah, yeah whilst on his phone at the same time. 
yeah. and <laughs> new supplements. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so given the fact that gyms are now closed and that a lot of people are suffering with their mental health, um, Kyle, uh, I've known Kyle for a long time. He hasn't always been a mindset coach. Um, he's gone through periods in his, his life, much the same as everyone else, um, not really knowing what his purpose was. And I think by default, he's kind of found this one um, by communicating messages and it being very well received by um, the public or, or, or his followers on Instagram. So by default, he's kind of fallen into this role. And personally, uh, for someone who's quite skeptical of a, of a mindset coach as such, I've watched his content and can totally get behind it. Um, I get the message he's trying to communicate. And I think a lot of people would, would you know, learn a lot from someone like Kyle. Um, and it, it can certainly help those who are going through a rough time. So um, I don't know if you want to give a little introduction of what, what you do, Kyle, and what what the goal is, what, you know, what your sort of yeah. business sort of <clears throat> ideas yeah. are. Yeah, so like... Um... I'm, my background is um, I work in children's homes. So I work in children's homes. I have done for six years. Um, so I've always, I've always had that passion of, of help and knowing I've wanted to help people. You know, the goal was, um, you know, a young looking after young offenders, having them out, et cetera, et cetera. But I found that it, it was just, it still loved there, but it was just a job. And then basically um, I done through my, through my own suffering, through my own suffering of like, you know, dark days and et cetera, et cetera. I, I was going through a bad patch, come out of it. Hence why I do what I do now. Get into that, obviously, by, I call lifestyle analysis, by um, going to the doctors, and they did not help me one bit, by adapting and looking at my life and assessing it all. Um, and obviously doing coping mechanisms, obviously strategizing everything I do from the morning to the night, uh, reflective Sundays, why I felt like I did on that day, I, I got myself off um, a lot of uh, painkillers by saying again, reflecting, et cetera, et cetera. And I went on a podcast, believe it or not. I went on a podcast and I talked about all this and everybody thought this larger than life character, you know, couldn't believe what I was saying, that I, I didn't want to be a, I, I've had everything in life um, and I didn't want to be a, I couldn't, it got to a point where I thought I was never going to get through it. And then, like I said, by putting all this, taking control of my life, um, I actually had a mindset coach myself. This is why I know these are these are believable. These are they are working people. They're mentors. They're coaches, and it worked for me, and it changed my life. Um, so yeah, so I went onto a podcast, and I, I opened up and talk, talked about this, and they just bump across the valleys. Absolutely bump. I was having my my phone blew up. My parents were getting cold and they just couldn't believe what I was saying. First of all, they couldn't believe that somebody like me went through a dark side because, like I said, there was it was just chemicals and silly things in the brain, which I didn't know how to use. And this is why I'm going to explain to you why a mindset coach is so important because it's how it, it's knowing when to use chemicals like all dopamine, cortisol, uh, no epinephrine, all these things are all internal. They're not external, they're internal. You were in control of every single chemical if you want to, if you want to. So, you know, in, in a little bit of a, you know, without going too scientific, because I'm not a scientist, you know what I mean? Um, but that's the, that's the power of the mind, you know, how to control it. And that sort of blew up. I saw, I started doing videos, started helping a lot of people um, through phone calls, just showing them what to do, et cetera, et cetera. And then it was just like, boom, now I know why I'm put on this earth. Now I know why, like, like, um, uh, like I said earlier, before we start recording, that's why I'm this large and life character. This is why I, my communication skills in the children's homes, when I'm out in the street, why I've got a, that, that gift of communicating with people and listening. And then it just, I just, it clicked. So I just went down this road and gone back to university and do my level five in cognitive behavior therapy. And I'm doing my NLP practitioning course. Once again, no, I'm not doing it to be a CBT therapist, I am doing it to add to what I already believe and what I'm finding out myself. Um, before this podcast, I had a phone call of a very high rugby player, um, uh, captain of rugby squad, and he phoned me, it made my day, to thank me, because he has been watching my Instagram, 
and he's been putting all my coping mechanisms into his days the last couple of months. And he's even done a Zoom meeting with all the rugby team and they've all started following me and they started using my coping mechanisms and my techniques in their day. And he, he wanted to thank me, he was cleaning up on the phone. So it's just like, and the more I'm doing it, the more, uh, it's, it's overwhelming. It's just like, this is, this, is, this is my gift. I'm living in my gift. This is where I need to be. And, and it's, you know, like I said, it's a passion, it's, it's a hobby. I, I've been studying all morning. Uh, and it's not even like I'm studying. It's like I'm. It's a hobby. It's a fucking hobby. I'm, I'm loving it, basically, John. <laughs> Good. I think. I think at the moment, I think. It, it, so I think, mental health is less of a taboo uh, subject than it used to be, but it's still not fully understood. Um, and as you said, the the basic principles of trying to get through mental health and the way that the NHS manage it is not enough. Um, I've got friends who've been on um, antidepressants for a very long time um, and fundamentally they do nothing for them um, long term uh, and short term they, 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 they're very little help to be fair either so um, having having listened to some of your videos and and know you knowing you as a person for over the years um, I think it, it goes a long way what you're doing I think people who have mental health issues, whether they want to accept that they do or if they if they don't, um, they should should pay pay mind or pay attention to someone like you because um, you know I think I'm a strong minded person and when I got made redundant two years ago, my mental health suffered and having someone like you to to listen to or even just to sort of uh, lean on for a bit of advice would have gone a long way to be honest. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Like I said, it's the, the overwhelming thing. And the thing is, well, it's, it's, you can't really pinpoint it. So a doctor, a doctor has 10 minutes, okay? So a doctor says has 10 minutes with you. You go in, you lay it on the line, you say, this is how I'm feeling, I'm depressed, etc. Like, I, I got something called SAC, obviously, uh, Structure, Action, Consistency, right? So uh, that's what you need. SAC, I call it. Simple as. Yeah, you need structure, you need action and you need consistency. But like a doctor, will, you go to see a doctor and the doctor will say, yeah, use certainly, you know, use, use this, that, whatever. And um, that's it. Obviously, they'll give you a little bit of a pep talk. It's, it's, and it's not their fault because they've got 10 minutes, but they won't sit you down and, and, and assess your life. The amount of people who come to me and I don't even say a word and they show me they Sunday to Sunday and I can pinpoint already three things that why they, they, their anxiety is, is, is so high, why they're depressed. They, and half of the time, it's, it's, it's not even depression in a way. It's, it, it can be fixed with, with, with some mindset coaching, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, it's, it, it's mad because, it, like I said, the doctors, it's not the doctor's fault. It's not the NHS. The NHS is, they need to change it, basically. But... You know, how many people are there? How many people are them doctors seeing? And they've only got 10 minutes. They can't sit there and do what I'm doing, or they just got to give you a tablet, do what they can. And I, I like I said, whose fault is that? Like, you I mean, I'm not pointing well, a, doc a doctor is a general practitioner. So they're not going to be qualified enough to actually deal with um, like direct mental health. They know like the basis and stuff, but they're a referral machine. A GP is a referral machine um, for specialists, but the funding um, available for people over 19, unless you're sectioned, basically doesn't exist. You know, and say you're really struggling and stuff like that, like your waiting time is six weeks. Like if, if you're struggling enough to go to the doctor, like you're in trouble, right? Six, you know, six weeks is, is break time, you know? Um, and like you said, it's not the NHS's fault. It's, the NHS is completely crippled in every direction, even more so now with the lockdown. Do you know what I mean? Like it's 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 horrific. And we see this the students because um, you don't know me. I've just said this a thousand times. I'm a teacher, and we see students that you know as soon as they hit 19, outside of our establishment, the support isn't there. You know. But you were saying as well, like a lot of it isn't depression and stuff. And so with the with the release of the stigma of mental health, a lot of people are actually self-diagnosing themselves with depression and 
to kind of just give up on working themselves. This isn't to detract from like people that are actually depressed because it's a it's a crippling condition. You know, I'm well aware of that. Um, you know, I've had manic depressants in my in my family and bipolar and like various. You know, that's not to detract from them, but some people are picking up these things, thinking that areas of lulls in their life is is depression when actually they just need, like you said, coping mechanisms. Some of the things we do in education is resilience training, um, which is probably similar to you, how to cope with life's shit sometimes. Do you know what I mean? And especially the lockdown is like everyone's <clears throat> suffering and some people are gonna go down, you know? So I completely get what, I completely agree with everything with, that you're saying. I conceptually, I'm not familiar with I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the things that you're like studying and stuff, but I'm not familiar with you. I'm, I apologize. Um, but yeah, I, but completely, say, I completely say, agree with your angle. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And like, like you said, Dan, like I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, you couldn't have said, you couldn't have said it better. So one, my angle as well is, um, and people can like it or, or not. It doesn't bother me. Like the, the saying now with mental health is like, <clears throat> it's okay to, to not be okay, or, you know, I, and like you said, it's with me, uh, they're completely right with what they're saying. But like you said, it's giving more people an outlet to blame it. And like, uh, rather than just, um, rather than just actually, you know, trying to solve the situation, life is fucking tough and not, not manning up as of such, but, you know, Discussing, I've got a problem, and I like to put. I like to put on the end of that. It's okay to not be okay, but what are we gonna fucking do about it? And it's as simple as that. And it's it's like it, it's, it's giving the wrong, sort of the wrong message for me anyway. It's like it's okay to not be okay, and that's that. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's you kind of like it's kind of like accepting it, isn't it? It's almost exactly. like saying it's okay to accept it. Yeah. Whereas what you're exactly. what you're saying is it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay for you to do fuck all about it, basically. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Ex exact, exactly, the fuck, exactly the same. And that's where, um, that's where it all comes down to <clears throat> um, a, a mindset coach. Like, like, even when I pass all these level fives and, and do this forever, I will still call myself a mindset coach because, like, one of the one of the coping mechanisms I put in place, I bring it up because it, it, the rugby player mentioned it. Oh, I, don't, I don't like saying names or anything. Um, and he said, like, in the morning. I have a routine in the morning. Obviously, I wake up. Um, my clothes are pre-staged the night before. Um, obviously, Johnny and everyone who follows me would know this. I pre-stage my clothes the night before. I don't have no screen time on my phone, no blue light exposure because my photo, obviously, the photo receptors so I could fall off the sleep better. So that would be my time then when I have no phone or no screen to set my clothes out. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, then uh, I won't touch my phone. I'm straight down where there's yoga. Burp, literally 100 burpees, press-ups, straight into a cold shower, back up, get my clothes on that are already pre-staged, um, and my bag is pre-staged. No anxiety. It takes everything away. Um, takes all procrastination away. takes everything away uh, by being disciplined with everything, with your work clothes, everything, anything. So get back up, then I'll pick my phone up. And uh, what he was saying was how much that little thing has helped him. And what I was explaining to him was, do you realize the difference? You were the same man. You were the same person. The, the weather outside is still four degrees. It's still fucking seven o'clock in the morning. You're still in the same bed. You were the same old man. But by not picking your phone up and just changing your mindset, your day is completely changed. Just by changing your to a, a routine or just by changing a, a perspective. Like I was talking about the way I come out uh, and drive. Before, I used, to, I used to think, oh, I'm in a car now. I can't wait to get to that destination. Now, I can't wait to get in my car because that's an opportunity. I've changed my perception, changed my perspective on that journey. It's a 20-minute ebook. That 20 minutes is something I can learn on the, uh, about the nervous system. That's 20 minutes. So I've changed my perception on a drive. And it, it's, that's, why, that's why I like calling it a mindset course. You can change anything in life, positives and negatives. That's what cognitive behavior therapy is. It's changing you know, changing um, understanding. So, you know, stop using the words like um, need and have. I don't need this. I don't need that. Have, have, have. Constantly using have. I don't even use the word bad anymore. I use challenging. I've had a challenging day. 
I haven't had a fucking bad day. I, 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 I'd have a cheek to say I had a bad day. I live good. Do you know what I mean? I had a challenging day. And same as I take, if I was in jiu-jitsu, if I was in jiu-jitsu and I got tapped, well, I get, I do get tapped a lot of times. If I got tapped 11 times, I don't walk out to the gym with my, with my head low. I think to myself, right, why did I get tapped? How can I not get tapped next time? It's exactly the same as life. It's the exact same analogy as life. You, you stop thinking, fuck, why what happened? Right, bam, that's happened. How can I stop it from happening next time? Just boom, change of perspective, change of perspective, change of mindset, and that's why I will always be always calling it a mindset. Because it's simply it's just bam, just changing, changing the way we look at things and putting things in place. It's massive. I mean, you'll see a lot of people, and I don't know whether you use this language, um, that find themselves in a position and then they start pigeoning themselves, pigeonholing themselves with things that basically limit their option. I can't do this, and then the barriers like just become exponentially like massive they've got a barrier for the reason they can't do the thing that would help them that would do the thing that the other and then they build so many of these things and then they become what i kind of consider like one of life's victims then everything else is is i don't know whether this is as common as i think it is but you you know you have some people in your life and stuff and there's it's like everything that happens is only happening to them, even, you know, even with the, the corona and stuff like that, like it's like directed, like at them. Like I, like I say, become, becoming a better you takes grind. Obviously, um, unfor unfortunately, I don't know where this is the, I don't know where this is the best way to, to word it, but uh, unfortunately, to be happy, you've got to, it takes work. Like, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying you can't just, well, I, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not just saying some people can't just be happy, but there's always a, um, something there for them to be happy with. And it does take grind. And if you're feeling a bit shitty or you're feeling down, you've got to work like that. Same again with the mindset code. People are not doing mental exercises. Like people will go to the gym and train, they run. What about your fucking mind? It's the most important thing, the most important asset you've got. So this is another coping mechanism for amazing tra strategies that I like to do. I call it Reflection Sundays. So I have a diary. Um, and through, through the week, um, say somebody who was um, uh, uh, really down, really depressed and thought, you know what? Like, you can, ne you can, never, be, you can never be what you could be until you get angry. I, I love that saying. And look, and look like... Everybody can take different uh, perspectives of that saying, but I like it because you've got to think to yourself, fuck this. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being unhappy. Like, what am I going to do about it? Do you mean, what the fuck am I going to do? But I'm sick. I, this is, I, I deserve better than this. My mother deserves better than this. My kids deserve better than this. I, I'm, I'm feeling sorry for myself. What am I going to do about it? Do you mean, and then, so if you're feeling like that, get a fucking diary. Get a diary and then say for the Wednesday, what you had a bad day or challenging day Wednesday, I say challenging all the time, what a challenging day Wednesday, write it down. And then on the Sunday, you look through your week and you reflect. And then on the Wednesday, we go back to that day that was challenging. Right. Why did that happen? Who was I with? You know, and you know, actually look at it all, look at it all. Like it's data, look at it all. Um, and then reflect on the Sunday and you start to notice patterns. And then if you do that for four weeks, you notice that you're depressed and down when you haven't done something for a certain day, you're around the same people and it just becomes a pattern. Same again, it's lifestyle analysis. And after four weeks, the, the amount of people that this have drastically changed, me including, um, why I push it so much, it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But you've got to, you've got to, like I said, take that mindset of like, fuck this, I, I'm, I'm not being angry anymore. And it's like people need to find that, 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 that thing to hold on to. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like my, mine, mine would be um, my parents, for example. Do you know what I mean? People need to find that it's bigger than you. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it's bigger than you. So if you were feeling down, you were feeling depressed, blah, blah, you've got to look at the bigger picture. It's, it's bigger than you. Like, so now, like I, I put a video up, first of all, like a while ago saying like, I realized how, how everything was about me and how, how, how selfish I was. And I, I never looked, I never looked around and how, how would this affect my mother? How would this affect my brother? How would this affect this? How would that affect that? And you've got to realize that everything you do um, um, affects everybody. And 
You've got to have a purpose. You've got to have a reason to get up in the morning. So when you're feeling down, say you've got a kid um, or you've got, you know, a partner or you've got somebody that loves you. It's, a, it's not about you. So when that alarm goes off and you're depressed and you're sad, you've got to get up and get in that cold shower. You've got to get up and get in that walking. You've got to get up and run because it's bigger than you. you. Your kid deserves more than that. Your partner deserves more than that. You deserve more than that. You don't deserve to be sad. You don't deserve to be unhappy. You deserve to live the best life you can. But that starts with you. Nobody else, you. Do you know what I mean? It's all, like I said, it's all eternal. Everything is internal, not external. Everything is in, in, in you. Everything's in you. Chemicals, passion, it's all there. And only you can change it. And then but sometimes, like, um, what I will do, one of my techniques is my, my, my screenshot. So when I pick my phone up, it's my business now. Before, it used to be my mother. I work with an 18-year-old boy. I work with an 18-year-old boy, and I've changed his screen, his screen saver to obviously just three letters. Obviously, um, driving, MMA, and parents, because he was worried about his parents. And I just said, this all you need to do is tunnel vision. Every time you start to feel down, every time you pick your phone up, you'll always look at that, the, the, the screenshot. like and Because you need, you need purposes, like, you know what I mean? You need purposes. And sometimes, like I said, sometimes it's bigger than you. You need to channel that energy and think deep. My screensaver is Dorian Yates on the hack squat. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, though. Perfect. There's a reason for that's there. It still yeah. hasn't worked, though, because he's still got small legs. Have I, though? Mine's, mine's Dan McNabb in the black <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... uh, it's funny you say that, Kai, because obviously with um, I've been reading a book. Uh, started reading a book last year, which was... Uh, it's your rec- first book. So yeah, it's my first book. Roger Red Hat. But I couldn't read it for a while because it was upside down, and I realised uh, I was reading it back and forth. Yeah. You know, so um, <laughs> I do that with pornos sometimes. Yeah, I, I do get it so long, innit? Yeah. yeah. Which way? Which end do I fuck? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, one of our previous guests, Joe, uh, Joe Bollinger, he recommended a book to read, Atomic Habits. Um, I don't know if you've read it or not, but um, it's basically saying how you you change your little day everyday habits in order to succeed for. The outcome. Um, so it's like I I've made shit habits in the past. Like I mean, I like I procrastinate. I do procrastinate a lot, and I found reading that book. If I made them little changes every day, it would obviously make out to be in a better or I'd succeed throughout the day. I'm just being a you know, um, what how do I explain it? It's basically, run my day a lot better than what I would run it normally. Because um, I was finding the little habits that I weren't changing was getting me down and I was beating myself up there that I wouldn't get this or get that. Just by changing them every day has made it a lot better. Like I don't get stressed out about things. I don't fucking, I don't be hard on myself about anything anymore. It's just little habits, isn't it, you know? And I think people do that, don't they? Of course it is. And like Dr. Dr. Miles Monroe talks about, um, you know, what ha- ha- habits, you, you, you don't design your future, your habits design your future. You know what I mean? And, and it's true. If you're, if whatever, whatever your habits are, like you said, um, are constantly going to design your future. If your habit, like I put a post up again, uh, again about if your habit is constantly eating takeaways, if your habit is constantly um, sitting down on the t- uh, watching telly, if your habit is constantly complaining, if your habit is constantly negative thoughts, that's going to be your future. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's yeah, yeah. habits. Are, habits are massive and big wins, small wins. I, I practice gratitude every morning. Um, you know what I mean? I, I I give myself the little wins all the time. Gratitude is one of the one of the strongest forms of power. It, it, it's unbelievable. But you need to give yourself the small wins and the little wins. And like when you're saying about you find yourself not procrastinating so much, it's because your habits is basically it's the same thing as as the the routine and, and changing your lifestyle analysis. It's like um, yeah. I, I, it stops you procrastinating because it said it's it's, it's um you know I mean it's the less the more disciplined and structure your life is the less you procrastinate because everything is there ready set out. You know I mean I you, if you ask me what I'm doing next Thursday at seven o'clock I'll tell you it's in my diary ready. Yeah. You know I mean yeah yeah exactly. it's just it's yeah. there but habits like habits. So uh, if we're gonna it. if we're gonna put a bit of um relevant perspective on this um what would be your advice to people who are used to going to the gym and having that outlet 
um, and now they can't do it. Um, they're not getting the same satisfaction from going for a walk or from a, for a run. What would be your advice to those people? Uh, same again, and unfortunately, there's nothing they can. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing you can do about the gyms being closed. And I, I see so many people on Instagram mourning about the gyms being closed that the amount of energy they use on more, like I'm talking like three weeks. I've, I've done this, I've done that, whatever. Um, been working, blah, 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 blah. Three weeks later, they're still mourning. I'm thinking, fuck, do the amount of energy that you wasted on mourning. You could have used that on changing your routine. And so it'd be the same again. You'd have to just think, right, I can't go to the gym. You're going to have to replace it. You're going to have to replace it with something. It might not be, um, like people, people, you've got, you've got to use your imagination. People, auto, people automatically think, <clears throat> people automatically think, run and walk. That's all they think. It's, it's just, they need to open their mind up and, and start changing their life around and their routine and start thinking of, you know what I mean, what other ways they can adapt, basically. You've got to adapt. You, you've got to adapt, like, uh, but it's it's all it's all with right. Bam, get my book out Sunday to Sunday, and it's just replacing you know uh, hit workouts or anything. You, you might find I, I think it's perfect. So many people I've spoken to that have said I've fallen in love with something I never thought I would have before because the gyms are closed. Do you know what I mean it's it's it's, it's hard work when somebody's a big big guy and <clears throat> they used to lifting weights, really 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 heavy weights and. That's been taken away from him. T totally, totally understand that. But like, you can't, you can't. It's, 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 it's simple as you cannot sit there and moan. You can't. You have to go to the fucking, you have to go to the diary, go to the workshop, go and think, right, the gyms are open. What can I do? And Google anything, just, just anything. Uh, you know what I mean? Go to the local park, fucking pull ups. Anything, anything, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to your, to your situation. Do you know what I mean? You have to. There's no other way. You can't, you can't moan. You can't moan about it. Well, the biggest waste of time on planet Earth is thinking about shit that you can't change. That is literally, there is nothing that is worth less of your time than, you know, talking about shit. That or wasting energy thinking about or getting that you can't like actually change, you know, and and that's the thing is that, like this is where it comes down like a little bit of like you can either just think this is happening to me like God has it in for me or whatever, or you can redirect like that energy, or if you really want to, you can you know save up every I've saved up like because weight training is such a huge thing. I um, started with a squat rack in the first lockdown and then I just accumulated stuff. I put my energy into working. I worked two jobs and I ate like cheaper food. And then eventually I accumulated more and more kit. And now I have some stuff that I can like do like all right with. And I moved it into a, a container. Um, uh, that only fans is doing you well then, Dan, is it? Only fans <laughs> killing it, mate, literally. People just <laughs> sending me barbells for dick pics. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I mean, I like don't get me wrong, I was fuming, I was fuming, and, and about the thing. Um, but I thought lockdowns like coming, and like rather than just packing it in, like, and I didn't like, I don't have like a, you know, like a particularly well paid job or anything like that. I still have bills and blah, 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 and stuff like that. But because it was so important to me, I put tried to put something of like gathering stuff for this shit storm that was fucking inevitable let's be honest people have me like messaged me like I, I can't believe it happened again and i was like well why did they extend furlough till march like come on now like it was definitely happening again um 100 was happening again and like the like so for example it's the same again going back to mindset changing and perspective like this is how you have to think about it. So, for, for example, me, um, my plan was uh, I love my I love freestyle wrestling. So I, I was wrestling. Uh, I, I can't wrestle. So like it's the same as me. I, I'm in the same position. Uh, people can't have big heavy weights. I can't go and grapple with somebody because the gyms are closed. It's impossible. I can't go and grapple with a tree. But you know what I mean. So what I've had to think is right. Um, 
I've had to think to myself, right, so what, what can I do? What can I do now? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, assess everything via YouTube. I'm going to watch all the, the two tutorials and I'm going to work. I'm going to work so hard and get so fit and get, get my gas tank so good that when gyms do open back up, um, that I'm going to be fit down than everybody else when we grab it and wrestling. So, you know what I mean? You need to start thinking outside the box. And rather than, you know what I mean, um, down and out, what are my weaknesses? What are my weaknesses? Do I, I'm, I'm crap at that. This is, I'm shit at that. I've always wanted to do that. Or work on your weaknesses. Something that you'd never, something you'd never have time for when the gyms are open because work training, work training, work training. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's outside of training as well. It's not all about training. People need to be open-minded. Somebody who's had their gym taken away from them, I know how imp the importance of training and, and, and endorphins. And I, I really do. But they can they can look outside the box and think, now I, I've got a couple of months off training. What have I always wanted to do? What have I always wanted to learn? They, they can do that. Do you mean, what, what have I always wanted to do? And it's thinking outside the box. Do you mean? And it's just, it is like... Um, and um, yeah, like I, I'm constantly watching videos now, constantly watching videos, constantly watching uh, jujitsu, rolling, constantly watching it and thinking like, you know, and you, you've got to have that, you've got to have that sense of when it's happening. Because when you're making plans, you know, um, doc, uh, Dr. Fran Andrew Huberman, actually, they've done tests that even thinking about goals and writing down goals releases dopamine. So you don't even have to train. Dopamine will, will be released if you write down goals. So you could even have a piece of paper and think, right, the gyms are closed. You know, blah, blah, blah. And if this is my this is for me now, I'll give you my example. The gyms are closed. I can't grapple, I can't wrestle. But I've got two months, for example, to get my cardio ridiculous, to get my legs and glutes um, strong from hill sprints or whatever, because they're my weakness when I'm on the mat. And I'm going to watch as many jiu-jitsu tutorials and master everything as I can. Just by writing that down and the thought of it, because I've got a goal, gives me gives me hope and gives me happiness. And you, I said, you, you, you've got to assess it and take advantage of it. But once again, that's perspective and mindset, just flipping it. Some people won't. Some people will still be mourning in a month's time when it's closed, but they wouldn't have gone anywhere. Other people then will take from this, will take from it and they will excel and they will just you know be surprised what they can do i mean i i know loads of people who didn't even pick up a book who were very very high level trainers and they just found a love for reading and you know i mean an hour a day they've read and it's mad like and that, that's just a small example there's, there's so many things out there that you can look into i found a love for yoga found a love for yoga um zoom meetings on yoga i i put my heat in on um, and I, I used to go to hot pod, put my heating up, close the blinds, get my mat out, yoga. I never in a million years thought I'd love yoga. It is one of the best things, euphoric things I've ever done in my life. And the same again, you, you told me last six months ago that you'd be doing yoga. Fucking no way. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Some people need to just try, try. If you don't try, you don't know. And if you're trying, do you know I mean? if, if you're not trying or if you're not failing, you know, you know what I mean? If you're not failing, you're not trying. <clears throat> Um, that's interesting you say that thinking about stuff of like training and stuff this is a bit of a juxtaposition from what you're talking about um releases dopamine so this explains why people are pussies because they can just <laughs> think about training so all the people that want to like out supplement being a pussy and think about their training design and all of that shit they're getting they're getting the free dopamine, and that's why they've got no gains. <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, the, it's, it's the, the it's science the, behind being a pussy. Yeah, it's the yeah. It's, the, it's, the, it's, it's the it's the thinking, it's the it's the thought of achieving the goal. That, yeah, that, that, without that, that, ever that, that, actually that, that, achieving it. I mean, I know I'm, it, yeah. I'm I'm flipping what you're saying into a negative. Oh, of course, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course. Like, so, of course. But what? but that make that that makes sense. Why some people like just thinking about like being massive is enough so like, one one thing that jumped out at me when you were talking about um trying to look at what what you get from the situation now um that you wouldn't have had and since 90 percent of the people watching this are bodybuilders um the one thing that stuck out for me is that a lot of people are going to be a lot healthier 
because if you're still running two grams a test with no gym, you're a fucking moron. Um, you should well, you shouldn't be running two grams a test anyway. But well, you know what I mean. No, if you're running, yeah. if you're I mean, running, understood if, how people can do that anyway. But if yeah. you're if you're running in a full blown cycle with no gym access, you're a fucking moron. So uh, the truth is, is that a lot of people who are going to be a lot healthier as a result of this. Well, and, yeah, and a lot of people actually are going to be better when they come back. And like um, like was being said by Carl, you. If you could plan like this as downtime and then put in place like the most ridiculously structured and engineered like training regime with set goals and stuff like that and set yourself up for the next. And when you're in, like your mentality is going to be raging. You're like CNS is going to be fucking like rolling. You can work on some of your, your fitness and stuff. I mean, I know so, like um, some person, Dave Young, who's um, a bodybuilder, did actually just give up training for the whole time. Um, I don't know what he did, whether he did like meditation or whatever. It wasn't clear. Um, but um, he um, then he just when he started again, he just exploded, like absolutely exploded. So, so like it's the same again. Yes, yeah, exactly. And like it's the same again, Dan. So like. Same again. I, I keep I keep referring to it. Obviously, the word perspective, but it is it's, it's how you look at it. So, like perfectly what you said. Somebody now, a, a bodybuilder now, who's obviously thinking the words against him. He's the only one that's going through it. He, he misses his gains. Blah blah blah. All this. Uh, he could right think. He could think right. Now is the time. You know, going to bodybuilding. I know I don't know much. Now is the time I can run a bit of a PCT. I give my receptors a fucking a break. I can I can just just give my tendons some time off and just relax, obviously, and just make it a positive, give everything a break and, and get my pen and paper and write down my cycle of where I'm going to come back on, what my PBs are going to be, what, what I'm going to aim for. And just by doing that, we give, you, you said it perfectly. They'll go to the gym, they'll be fucking better than ever because they are, they are fucking mindset. Of what they've missed <laughs> I'm sorry, but Jack's, Jack's face... I'm just yeah, looking at you like listening like, to this, just thinking time off training? Fuck, <laughs> fuck time off training? Fuck this. Jack's training. I'm fucking out. I'm out. No. <laughs> no, Jack, Jack's giving blowjobs for gym sessions. Yeah, Jack, <laughs> Jack's trained consistently every Johnny, hour. Johnny, just every because day. you want one off me to go into your establishment now, hold on. <laughs> well, you, you messaged me that first. <laughs> I mean, the, the viewers at home will be able to rewind Jack's face. We can <laughs> I'm, I'm like gonna put a little that. snap snapshot in, don't just worry. Just to see how absolutely just against everything that was being said no, was. No, I was because I was gonna say, um, I can't remember the exact study, and I don't like referencing studies anyway, but someone did a study on how long like someone took an uh, extraordinary amount of time off. It was over eight weeks. Um, I know the lockdown's probably gonna potentially go on for longer than that, but they took eight weeks off. And it only took them something like two weeks to gain all their lean body mass back. And I don't, and I don't, and that was natural as well. So I think everyone worrying about it. I know I can't really comment because I haven't done it myself, but yeah, I, we you, can taking, do. you taking time off isn't the end of the world. Like if you train hard enough when you get back, it won't take you an awful amount of time to get it back. And we're not necessarily aiming this at like, the top like hooligans are going to find a fucking way. I did, so I'm not going to preach about have time off. It's it, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to like say like you know I may as well be in Dubai telling everyone that I'm we're in it together. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to do that. I mean I've, I've got a setup like you haven't. Sorry, like um, that was good. Like like yeah, like but I don't think I'm you know I'm not like I made it happen. But I'm I'm not trying to like say that i'm just like trying to say for your middle level like coming up or, or whatever muscle memory isn't like they remember stuff like they're like like remember two times table and stuff but like do you know what i mean it remembers like the pathways are there the neural connections are there the fibers are there um the blood flow like you know um is is ready for that like the time it takes you to i mean i do pull back um and pushes and when i do pull back like i can you know, like lose 20 pounds, like, you know, easily and stuff like that. But like straight back, 
like within a week or two like I do that on purpose I mean obviously no training is different and actually what we're talking about with like mental health and stuff actually isn't the muscular gains um and stuff like that we're talking about the need like most people who started training didn't look at a magazine and be like I want to be sexy they were like I'm losing my shit I don't know what like you know and I need to push all of this stuff that's in and push it out and what you're saying is that there's there's more than one way like to do that um and you're right like people people at lockdown will either look down at lockdown and be like it's just deleted from their mind like how i feel about school um <laughs> like nothing or, or, good or, or christmases with jimmy sowell yeah or like christmases <laughs> with jimmy sowell um so all of that good like gone and that would be a good thing. You could flash my assigned book up because people didn't believe me that that's there. I sent it on the group. You could flash yeah. that up. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, or you could look back and be like, hey, I like learned this shit here. I did this shit or um, or la la. I'm not saying I'm great at this because I'm actually not. Like, I, and, but I'm still like working. My job's turned fucking mental trying to teach everyone online and stuff like that. This is my thing. This is, this is my other thing. Slap upon the beast. And um, so, I mean, I'm lucky because I have like a, a like a multi-directional like interest in like things, but not many people do. They've put everything into this training, and you know, it's a lifestyle. Like, I have to like only look at videos of muscly men. I can only do this. I must only like wank with the guys like Hench in the corner, and, like and, and watch uh, Bash Bros podcast. And yeah, and only watch Bash Bros podcast. Like, good, I'm into it, yeah? But, like, I'm still thinking when people are like, oh, well, how do you work and do this and do, like, bodybuilding? Like, I'm like, how do people not? Like, I don't understand. Like, what would you what would you do? And this leads me to the kind of a question that's a personal question, um, is actually I'm really quite got loads of go, going on, and what I struggle to do is actually program in time to relax if I sit down and try and relax I feel like someone's shanking me like in the head about it's Don't like a Alice. it's like a feeling of like my baby's in the microwave and I've got to get it out like it's that urgent but like all the time like that that's you, like you I'm, put it in there yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't have a baby, but I'm just like saying, imagine that. Like, <laughs> that's really good too, yeah. Well, I might, I, I had, a, had some babies and I might crave them all, but like, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I bought them on Pizza Hut or whatever that conspiracy is. <laughs> whatever that one is. Um, I ordered a wardrobe and then I microwaved it, and turns out there was loads of kids. I think, is that the conspiracy? There was one where you, you go, <laughs> what, the, what, what that, was it? It was, it was like, no, no one's with me. There was no, a cons- I don't all right. There was that. a conspiracy, basically, where this furniture shop, and um, basically, was selling furniture. Oh, IKEA, right? Eh? It wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> sure, it's um, IKEA. But the theory was that basically, like, um, you could you'd buy like a wardrobe, but it would have the name of like a missing child. They, yeah. You'd oh, order yeah, the no, wardrobe. I didn't hear that. The SEC did hear that, right? I'm just moving a bit faster than you. Right. Um, but yeah, so maybe it's a bit like that. I've completely forgot, I fucking forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, basically, how do you? Relax. Yeah, how so do? You, like, but I want to be able to do nothing. I want to be so, able to okay. literally do nothing. Okay, so like I said, I, I so yeah, and regarding the regarding the topic within, um, it was misinterpreted. So when I was saying about um, taking time off, I was talking regarding when Johnny was talking about, um, you know. Uh, 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 courses and stuff. I, I meant that. Take time off that, and, and you know, low, lower it. Start to just no, don't don't do nothing. I'd never ever say not do nothing. But like go for long walks, get take up hiking, and like I said, learn learn more about your body and learn more about <clears throat> food. If if your life is bodybuilding, well, keep your life bodybuilding. But same again, change, changing it. This this is benefiting my bodybuilding career. So I'm taking time off. I'm going to go run a PCT. I'm going to lower that. I'm going to give everything a break. But I'm still going to hike and I'm going to listen to everything. I'm going to learn more about carbohydrates. I'm going to learn about this, learn about that, learn about that. So I don't mean take time off. If you're a bodybuilder, you're a bodybuilder. But make it work that way. It's always positive. Regarding the, regarding the relaxing, 
this is what I find works. Like I said, everything is what I find works. Um, and I'm, as you can tell, uh, I was I was diagnosed with high, 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 le- high levels of ADHD as a child, high levels of Ritalin. Um, and I'm 100 miles away. I know that game. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I can fucking tell, fucking Kyle, because you don't fucking sit still. Off a wall. So what I do, <laughs> this, is, this is what I do so I can relax, right? I call it, obviously, earning your luxuries. So, for example, today, right, I'll do today. Today now, um, I've got down in my day, because uh, my day's structured. Like I said, Jermaine, obviously, you've got you to have structure, action, and consistency. And so today, my day is structured. And half past seven tonight will be my luxury. So half past seven tonight now will be a podcast that I've chosen. But today, I've had to earn it. So uh, everything today would have been for, go for a run, complete this amount of, of, in my uni in my uni work, um, for dad or whatever, you know, what I mean little bits of that, simple things, um, uh, and then have this podcast, and then after seven will be my relaxing time. Well, that gives you um, self achievement needs, and, and and it helps you look look back at the day. You've done everything you needed to tick off, and then it's just a it's just, it's just a, a beautiful relaxation relaxation mode that's what works for me and it's by it's by identifying and ticking off the small wins because you you, you know what i mean but it's all about scheduling your day and that's what works for me and a lot of people i work with just by just by getting up in the morning doing their morning routine getting to work on time when they get home from work wherever you know uh doing what they what they put down making everything perfect and then by eight o'clock is the downtime. And if they've done everything that they've set out to do, it's goal ticking. By the time you've goal ticked and checklisted everything off, me personally and people I know, by the time they get on the set, they're in a, they're in a, just a nice, good place, good, great, great psychological place. And they've, they've hit all the needs for the day. Um, and that's what works for me. Um, the the issue this- I think Dan's got is similar to, to mine in a sense that, his mind is doing a million miles an hour, hour a day, a uh, mile, million miles an hour each minute of every day, right? Um, he's got a job now where there's no real cut off, so he doesn't go out the door and then come back from work. So his work is sort of at home teaching, all the time. Teaching's always like like that because it's never finished. Yeah, but but it's easy enough to say to yourself, right? Well, I'm going to draw a line. This is what I'm going to do. But then when the workload increases and the pressure's on, that fucking deadline goes out, that, that, that line in the sand goes out the fucking window. Um, and it's just managing that. It, it, it's, it, for me, it's finding something that relaxes you quickly. So if you only got a small amount of time to relax in, what is going to get you the most relaxed before you go to bed? Um, and in all fairness, it, it'll be different for everyone else, I guess, than, than, than each... Percent. So, like, um, bit like, uh, I'm the same. So, my job, like I said, is um, self-employed, and I work in children's homes. So, my job tomorrow would be a 24-hour shift. Then I got four days off. But I structure my days as if I'm in work. So, even if people in the house work from home, I, I, I still advise shut off date as if you were in work. Fucking shut off. You've got to, or, um. You know, if it comes to four o'clock and you've you've got a little bit more work, same again. You, you need to start routine it. I, I'll, I'll add this on to tomorrow, etc., etc., etc. But but don't let it don't solve the issue. Don't let it worry. Keep worrying. You make sure you know what you, what you've cut off with. If you've got a little bit more work to do, make sure you're not on the set. You in bed worrying about it. Make sure you you thought to yourself, right? A little bit of work I've got left. I will continue tomorrow, blah, blah. So that must be done. Regarding the relaxing, um, the major thing <clears throat> would be obviously, same again, you can't really you can't really advise anybody on relaxation because everybody's different. Like uh, regarding the sleeping, but, but, but if people have, I, so many people go to bed and they, their mind is constantly racing when they get to bed. Well, the main, the main focus of that is your phone, like, You've got, to, you've got to put your phone away, you've got to put the telly away, and you've got to start doing something this, this non-blue light, um, basically just blue light restricted, like no blue light. And that, that will automatically put you in a better relaxation mode regarding 
sleep wise, um, 100%. But regarding relaxing, you're going to have to just go through a few things, try a few things. Do you know what I mean? Like yoga for me was unbelievable. Yoga, and uh, like I said, I, if I if I find I've ticked off everything that I've wanted to do, that relaxes me anyway. That relaxes me. And that haven't, that haven't failed yet. That haven't failed. Like, I mean, I, this goes, goes to the like, works work smart not hard like which is kind of what all the teachers say about laughing as they're all run into the ground um so like yeah I th like johnny's saying like you'll plan your day and stuff like that or your week or whatever and then your boss will be like off instead of coming you know so like it's how to like still have a cutoff period and, st and, and stuff like that when you can just, you know, I mean, I don't know, Johnny like wanks off Thomas the Tank Engine for a job or something. So <laughs> like, say he's, you know, and then a new train comes in, he's got to give that one a reach round. Like something goes <laughs> wrong. Like his workload's like doubled, like instant. I'm pretty sure that's what Johnny does, similar or whatever. Um, but I'm, that's exactly what my job description yeah, says. I'm, I imagine that like Johnny gets thrown some like curveballs, which instantly turn his life to shit. Um, and that's pretty much like, what happens to me as well so but i have to create a try and create a uh um, a cut off of like i'm actually not going to kill myself or stay up all night um and try and like and like deal with it but i think that's why yeah but there's definitely something to be said even for just like writing down what you're prepared to do before you do it like i do completely agree with that and actually by just writing it down you realize like no, actually, like, that's, I can do that. Whereas if it's just backing up in your mind, you don't have, like, a projection of, like, you know, an order of importance of how you're going to work through it. And, like, do you know what I mean? Like, um, like the, totally with you on, like, as soon as I write stuff in my diary, I'm like, actually, that was really bugging me, but now it's down. Like, that's doable. I can do that. Um, but then when you get thrown the curveballs... Then I just sleep for like one hour and I'm just shit myself. It's 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 the it's the powers of micromanaging then. So same again. Somebody gets thrown a curveball, right? <clears throat> somebody gets thrown a curveball, and you can take you can take it. It all depends how you look at it. There's, there's like I'm looking at it in a different sort. There's stress. There's stress as in proper stress, or there's just little worries. Do you know what I mean like as in there's depression and then you know what I mean like proper worries and then there's a bit of a work stress. It sort of works for the both of them. So you micromanage. So same again, write, write down somebody gives you a workload. You in your mind, you think <laughs> back in, fuck me, that's that's a lot of work. But once you put it down and you micromanage it, you could even put it, you could even do it to importance, from importance to least important. Once you start micromanaging that shitload of work that have been chucked on you, um, you, you automatically, you look at it and think, oh, right, I can literally do 45 minutes there, 45 minutes there, get up half hour tomorrow morning, maybe grab that, and it just, it automatically, your stress level has gone both down. It's the same as if somebody has mental health issues um, and they have anxiety or they, they okay, they, they're anxiety-based and they don't like, they have phobias or whatever. So, it's the same with them, just sitting down and actually going through it, right? You know, what, what would really happen? What would really happen if I walked into test schools now? You know, what would happen? Uh, you know, most of them would say, I think, or, or you know... Um, They'd I, say, I'm put your yeah. fucking mask on. Put your mask on, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it, some people won't go in because of that. Some people will, won't go into test schools because they think that they're going to think because they haven't got the mask. And that will, that will cause them a lot of anxiety. But same again, it's micromanaging. It's, it's, it's like or sitting down and, and talking about it. The real, the realistic thing is people worry about uh, fabricated things. They fabricate what they're anxious about. 80% 80 80 of things you worry about do not happen. They do not happen. So they fabricate things. When you sit down and actually look at, okay, I've got real bad anxiety. I can't be in uh, uh, places uh, and I can't wear a mask or whatever. You know, I'm just, just related to just that particular uh, topic. But then when you sit down and you actually think, right, okay, so what's the worst that can happen? Um, I go in and I could, you know, I, I could faint, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You can't faint from a panic attack. You can't. It's just decided you can't. So it'd be like, okay, that wouldn't happen. You know, 
But when you start going through what's the worst that could happen, what you think could happen, it's not even that bad. It's, it's just about micromanaging. What's the chances of 100% this would happen? And even if your worst case scenario did happen, how bad would it be? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's the same with micromanaging, just going through it. And once you go through it all, um, I know I, I related stress in work to anxiety, but, uh, but it's, it's sort of the similar thing, like just putting it down into worst case scenarios. And you know what I mean? Um, I could do this, I could do that. And just honestly, it's just the same again. It's just, it's just analyzing, analyzing everything. It's, it's, the, it's the word, analyzing everything. How I bad think- would it be? How could I do it, et cetera? I think you're right in what you're saying. I've had I've had days where I've had so much on that I wouldn't dare leave my laptop. Um, and then I've been forced to leave my laptop and go and get something from the shop or whatever. And then I come back and I'm like, mm, it's not that bad. Um, and, and things like I've created really bad habits for myself. Like I, I used to not be able to switch my laptop off without reading all of my emails. But even though I have like 100 emails a day, um so like or unless i've actioned them so if i haven't read it or written down what i need to do about it um but then i was throwing myself in a really bad state i'm to try and do that every day and finish finish everything off so um i've had to go back and reanalyze how how i'm habits that i've i've sort of created for myself for causing me more stress um and i'm the same as dan i mean i tend to find that even if I haven't done the task, as long as I've written it down, I do feel somewhat better about it. And I tend not to. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess you've got a plan for, you may not have done it, but you've, you've got enough time to do it. Mm. Yeah. Like I, I, I can't help re- um, relating this to what I get. I get quite a lot of messages about digestion and people with stress related IBS. You heard about stress related IBS. And so the worst case scenario is that you shit yourself? And what? And what? And what? Same again. Like realistically, the worst case scenario is you shit yourself. It's, it's, you know I mean, it's, it's not. It's not death. Like it's not death. And once yeah. you once you st- once you start thinking logically about um, same again. I, I, I'll, I'll ve- it's, it's the same again with the both of them. Even if you are talking about a lot of anxiety or even just a workload in work. Once you actually think about it logically, is it gonna kill me? Is it even gonna hurt? No, it's it's not, but it's it's like I said, it's assessing it. It's assessing it. And like you said, John, and like, like we spoke about at the beginning, habits, habits design your future. So by you not lock, not not lock, uh, turn your computer off, etc. That, that was probably a daily habit that was causing you so much stress. But by changing that habit, which might take a month, it's not an overnight thing, but a, a month a month of switching my habit, discipline equals freedom. And when I talk about that, people constantly think that when I talk about discipline, it means getting up in the morning. No, discipline is fucking knocking your phone off and not looking at it in 45 minutes. Discipline is not going out on a Saturday when your boys are having a couple of pints because you want to feel fresh on a Monday. Discipline is everything. So if you want to change your habits, discipline comes down to that. It even comes out to that. You need to discipline yourself to knock that computer off and realise that that having an hour and and, and, and the structured time is not that bad. The same again, you need to go through you need to go through that level of discipline for a week or whatever. You no, know, like leg day. Fuck me, man. You want big legs? You want to fucking train legs? Like same yeah, time. Dan. You want you, you, yeah, yeah, you know, train legs, man. Don't, don't, it's my YouTube, you cunts. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to be stressed. You've got to work on not being stressed. If you're anxious, you've got to work on not being anxious. There is no difference between training your biceps and then training your fucking mind. Simple as. And people are not. People are not getting that, um, yeah. and they are starting to now. Simple, it's as simple as I, that. Like, what, I mean, I think that is like a, a point. Also, probably not one that I've actually considered is that what, what training like, legs? Fuck <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, yeah, like changing these things and actually like making you like better isn't like a one day or like a, a it doesn't just happen. It is like a progressive, and all of these things that you've talked about are a, a progressive thing. Just like, like I'll like kind of wake up in the morning and I'm already doing the normal morning shit that I do, or like eating the meals is like it's like an alarm until it's ingrained, you know. And that and that shit takes time. And like that's probably something I've not really like considered. I had an email rule where um, 
because I used to, when I first started teaching, I was bright eyed and bushy tailed and I was like, oh, my cherubs, I will do everything. And so I get an email and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll do everything that the email said. And then everything in education chops and changes so much. I remember doing like spending a week, like creating this like masterpiece. Um, and then they just went, yeah, no, we're not doing that unit. And I was like, what? No, I've written the, can we just do it? Cause I've like written everything for it. And they're like, yeah, no, we're not doing it. So then I created the three email rule. And it was that I'd ignore them for two emails. <laughs> I I'd just ignore the first request. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to do that. Yeah. And quite a lot of the time, the second email would never come. Um, but if the second one came, I'd be like, hold up, it's getting close. Keep an eye on this one. Could I could have to do this. And then the third one. But um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, my administrator found out about my free email rule. So then she would send me three emails at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're not advocating that because otherwise people are going to get sacked. So. Yeah, no, like don't do what I do, like ever. The people must know that, surely. Like that must be like a thing. Well, <laughs> that must be. Yeah, a thing. And Dan's top Johnny, tips. you need to put a disclaimer before the start of every podcast. Yeah, I mean, you know. Do not advocate the views of Dan McNabb. Yeah, on the podcast. <laughs> We're kind of doing the opposite. We've actually created a Dan's top tips section, so that 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 kind of promotes <laughs> something. <laughs> I think we're, we're kind of con convoluted in the message. I think. Don't migrate your kids. I, hopefully, people understand that it's not good. Don't follow IKEA's idea. <laughs> don't don't do the IKEA or Pizza Hut or whatever it was. It's IKEA. It's got to be. Um. Um. um no. It's yeah, got, I, was I, I think you're right in what you're saying, okay? Especially with like um. Obviously, like people with phones and that. Um, we spoke about this before, but uh, Dan yeah. had mentioned this before, and um, it's something that I have in mind that I changed myself because obviously Dan said to try it. Um, and just by not going on my phone every morning, it's changed my complete attitude to the day. Because uh, I used to get in a foul mood, and anything so little that would piss me off, it it knocked me out. But it was only because I'd be on my phone every morning. Well, this is what I wanted to ask, actually, Carl. Like the way that I see it, like forget the blue light thing or whatever i'll just buy some sunglasses or whatever and yeah. um like say i've got sunglasses um but if if you have your phone you're reactive yeah you're not you're not active yeah. so if yeah. you wake up in the morning and you look at your phone you're instantly controlled by some someone or something else and that's yeah. the fucking way to sleep. I'm not, you know? I'm, 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 the thing, the thing is, as well, Dad. Right? This, this is like, well, you, as soon as you pick your phone up, you're in aura of that device. The, the device owns you. But the main thing, which I, this is going to be, this, this, this is going to be massive in today's society and today's era, is this is what's happening. And I feel, I, it's hard. It's, it's going to be hard for the, I feel sorry for the young, the young, the young uh, up and comers coming now. What they're doing is, as well, you pick up your phone. Five past seven, after six, whatever time you wake up, you pick up your phone in the first five minutes. You're not in the best of moods, um, and you look on social media and you see somebody who's portraying a good life. And automatically, you're either jealous or you're either you're putting down your life. Um, and you somebody's been out for a run an hour before you. You're procrastinating because you didn't go for a run. So all, all that is automatically. It's bad, and, and like, and also as well, replying. So it's a two-way street. If you pick up your phone, same again, five past seven, quarter, quarter seven, whatever, and somebody's messaged you. Me personally, I like to message them straight back. Well, they're not having the best version of me. I, I'm, I'm messaging them with not much, you know, not very nicely. But if I leave my phone, do my morning, do my morning routine, then pick my phone up. The, the. The social media problem at the beginning is not so bad because I've, just, I've had my morning routine, uh, my no epinephrine flying, my fucking whatever. I, I'm feeling good and I pick up my phone. What would have bothered me an hour ago does not bother me. The people who I'm speaking to are having a better version of me. They're having a better result. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, and it's like you said, it's, you're controlled by that device. Just leave it alone for 45 minutes, like, you know, hour. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I, I've noticed as well. Like, I don't drink coffee like I, I I don't need coffee in the mornings. Um, I leave my coffee till twelve o'clock. Um, I, you know, creatures of habit. We're creatures of habit. First thing we do. Some people, obviously, obviously I'm not sure bodybuilding strict diet, but um, normal people straight down to the the kettle. Bam, coffee on. Well, I've noticed. Well, obviously, with my with my morning routine, um, 
I don't need a coffee. Well, obviously, where I've obviously done my burpees, I've done my press up, which, which takes 10 minutes for the way, get into my cold shower, got my clothes on, I'm ready for the day without even looking at the coffee. By the time I have my coffee then at 12 o'clock, oh, I feel amazing. And the amount of people I speak to that are chasing coffee all day, like a junkie, chasing caffeine all day, and you'd be surprised just by taking that, same again, changing somebody's morning routine, just changes their whole day. Um, so it's, it's, it's the morning routine is massive with the phone yeah, and everything. I see what you're saying, Kyle, but my, my, my like sort of in the morning, my only thing that I I can that I do that I have created uh, myself that that allows me to do that sort of reflective thing in the morning is drinking my coffee waking up sitting down with my coffee and I'll have it like an hour before my breakfast um and I'll, I'll sit there and drink my coffee like more recently with my girlfriend we'll sit down have our coffee in the morning and whatever and then I'll crack on with my work but I tend to find that I'm not able or disciplined enough if I take that coffee away I'll just dive straight into work yeah, well, what it, you could just have like you could even make that a decaf coffee. That could be any drink. Yeah, but that's like drinking like alcohol free. Yeah, but I think one. I think the reason why you do it is just to have the thing they're drinking. Like you yeah. don't do it necessarily for you the know, caffeine. And, and the thing is, it's not I, I'm not telling it, I'm not advocating and not telling everybody not to drink coffee. The reason I brought it up for and the reason I brought it up for was because, like I said, the amount of people who were telling me um Oh, I'm coming to me. Oh, I'm so down at 12, 1 o'clock. I'm so lethargic. I, I'm like, every day I just can't do nothing. And, and, and it's because of the morning routine. With, with you, John, with some people, it, it might be a nice little ritual and you're fine with your day. You crack on, you get work done. Um, but like, yeah, need or whatever. They dip in at 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock, and they're only six cup of coffee, and they're wondering why their anxiety is so high, and, they, and they're wondering why they, they, they're up and down, their anxiety is flying, because you're smashing stimulants in it, which you, which you didn't probably need if you just changed your morning routine up. So you wouldn't you advocate two scoops of Jack 3D? <laughs> <laughs> No, Agent Orange, no. straight in. Yeah. Running the fucking ceiling. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to see Kyle on two scoops of Jack PD. Wouldn't want to see it. <laughs> I do. What, 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 is the, what, uh, what is the strongest pre-workout you've taken, boys? Dan, what, what's the strongest one you've had? Me. I mean, I made some pretty fucked up stuff using one of those like herb crushers in my day. <laughs> so, like, yeah, the old school. Um, well, I'll tell you a story about someone else called Dan, because obviously it's not me, because I don't do <laughs> stuff like this. Because, um, um, But just, yeah, just crushing up, like, Clen and Ephedrine together um, and then mixing it with my, like, uh, pre-workout and then just flying about the place. And then, actually, I, I yeah, I completely stopped taking any pre-workout for a very long time. Um, and people used to say, oh, don't you take pre-workout? And I was just like... I fucking love this shit so much. I don't need it. And then you started taking atomic bomb, which is kind of the same thing as crushing up F and F. Yeah, and then, and then actually, yeah, that was when I started taking um, uh, pre workout again. Was atomic bomb, um, which is fucking nuts. Um, I like, literally remember when I first went when they were doing the testing, and I went and trained legs with um, with Leroy, and um, Av just completely stitched me up with a whole scoop. And I'm not, I'm not, a co- not, not really heavy into like caffeine and stuff, and like. I'm a bit like anyway, and I know that, so I don't stim myself up as much anymore. Um, and um, yeah, it's fucked. Basically, had like an out of body experience. It's fucking weird. What about you, Jack? Jack's the 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 fucking um, supplement yeah, review yeah. guy. What's the what's the name? What's the you obviously Jack the original Jack 3D zero chance everything bad. It's got like fucking smack in it. I haven't I haven't not had a pre workout since I was. 16. Really? Uh, I was just I, doing I haven't, fucking... I haven't trained often without a pre-workout since I was 16. It's because you've got a doing... supplement sponsor that tell, sends you about 10 yeah. different pre-workouts, you prick. Yeah. <laughs> I was just doing ecstasy when I was 16. Obviously, was... not, like, not working out. Like, just listening was... to drum and bass, but... <laughs> the fucking strongest pre-workout I've tried is um, the Alpha Dark Side Carnage. That was strong. Oh, did you a, did any of you have thing. did any of you have the you know do you remember Court Cooper or who was called Ask Court on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever see his stuff? Yeah, he had a he had a company and then 
he released one called Serum Code Pre. Yeah. And I took three scoops of that, and it was wild. But why would you take three Dude. scoops? We well, started did, with three. I did it. I did it by accident because he. <laughs> He's, one, he's, one, one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he sent me he sent me samples of oh, the right. stim, yeah. the stim and the non-stim. Oh, and I right. thought I thought the measurements would be the same on both. And I only read I only read the non-stim <laughs> serving size. <laughs> oh brilliant. So it was yeah. like it was like two scoops was 36 grams or something yeah. like that. So <laughs> So I read two scoops of the non-stim was 36 grams. So I thought two scoops of the, the stim was 36 grams as well. So I didn't bother measuring it out. I just poured the 30, I poured 36 grams of the stim in. But that turned out to be three servings. Mm. And that... Was it, was it half in your hand? I mean, yeah. you, you can't really say that was a strong pre-workout because if you took three scoops of most pre-workouts, it's going to fuck you up. Yeah. Mate, I like I'm shit with pre workout. Like literally, even like through the design of like Atomic Bomb, like Amp was nice enough to send me like samples when he was like getting it right. Cause Amp is anal as fuck with that sort of stuff with all of his like pre workout. Yeah, he was just testing to whether there was any bad sides. He just gave <laughs> you it. Like. That's fair enough. It take more than that. You have to kill me before I die. That's what I always say. <laughs> um and um yeah, like even now I still can't do like a whole scoop. Like, no the worst way. one I've had was somebody had like kept a, a, a tub of Jack 3D after they stopped selling it. Um, and what I didn't realize it, it sort of condensed down into you know, like the lump. Oh, shit. Um, so I opened oh, it Laura. up, yeah, I opened it up thinking it'd be fine. So I just picked out a lump and dropped it in my pre workout thinking that'd be fine, chuck it up. And lump. um, <laughs> I didn't didn't leave the house, I sat on the sofa with 999 dialed in my phone, just looking at my phone for two hours, waiting to press the call. I was like, I'm about to die. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised your receptors are still intact, to be honest. <laughs> Mine, yeah. Yeah, I don't think like um, like proper drugs is the same receptors as like pre-workout. I think there must be a separate. Well, obviously not, because otherwise Dan would be tiny. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I don't play with any of that stuff. I think like yeah, well, what comes up must come down, and that's why I don't do drugs anymore. And nice. um, and um, yeah, pre-workout. If I overdo it. I can't eat afterwards and I feel horrendous and then I can't sleep and then it's like it, it has the you, positives you, you, don't you can't way. sleep or you can't sleep better than you do now you know, like yes like worse I mean my sleep is still wank but like with the CPAP and stuff like that like a bit of melatonin and some GABA and shit like um like yeah I can get six and a half hours now so for example do you know with the do you know with the um so, you know, with the no phone, so the no, the no phone, etc. When, when I was talking about blue light, the reason why I bring up blue light because obviously the the, the bar releases more melatonin, so you sleep better. Same as um, so the same as in the morning. Um, they done a they done a study, uh, um, done a study. Sean Stevenson done a study um, on if somebody gets up in the morning just by doing five percent, just by doing five minutes of exercise in the morning would release more melatonin for the night and lower blood pressure. So, that, so putting that in place, a little, little five-minute exercise in the morning with the the no, the no light, uh, blue does a, light. Does a wank count, Kyle? Well, I reckon 100%, definitely. It depends. Surely, like, it depends I don't know if you five up. minutes, though. What did you just ask? <laughs> but you have, you're not allowed to watch it, It's my New Year's resolution guide. It's your New Year's resolution <laughs> You have to, have to have a good, have to imagine, you have to imagine it. Yeah, but Jack, that, Jack's fucked because he hasn't had sex for so long. He's got no imagination anymore of, of what sex is like. He has to use the porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would give you, um, that would make you sleep better. That, that's the reason why I, I mentioned it. There's so many little factors. That, let's see him again. That I'm still, I, I'm a puppy. For, I'm a puppy. I'm just, I'm just dipping my toes into the water of all this. I mean, I've only been. I would be doing it. it wasn't fucking a, a tomato season and the, the amount that I'm learning and, and seeing uh, and I, I use myself as a test study like I, I'm my own guinea pig I use myself for everything and it's, it's, you know, so 
But the little things I'm noticing is it's mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. So like going back to the pre workout stuff, um, um, the, the um, people are putting stuff in them. You know what I mean, like stimulants and stuff. Like everything you've got to think about. So like I've even right, I've even gone back to same again uh, with when I go to reflection Sundays. I felt like shit on a Thursday, and it's always after a certain takeaway. And I noticed that the MSG, uh, the monosodium glutamate or whatever, but the, the MSG in it was making me bad. And I, I noticed the pattern every time that I had a Chinese, um, I, I'd have a bad morning, like a challenging morning. So like people need to realize that everything they put in them is affecting. If somebody's got bad anxiety and they're really down and depressed or somebody's um, really stressed, You've got to think about all factors. So when you when you analyze when you analyze your your, your Sunday to Sunday or your month, you've got to, obviously food comes in comes in there. Everything comes into it. Not just your routine, your food. Like the, the difference in me since I started eating cleaner is fucking impeccably different. Absolutely substantially different. I'm a new person. Absolutely new person. And I even eat shit for a week to to test myself. The difference and. Oh, it's unbelievable. My anxiety, if my anxiety is lower, everything. Like, I, I don't even base, I I don't even base anxiety as bad now. I, I've changed my mindset. To, to anxiety is just energy. So I can't remember the last time where I felt anxious. I, I just I just think, oh, it's energy. I need, I need to do something. I need to put this energy towards somewhere else. And that's because I've changed my mindset. And my mind is like, it's like a placebo effect. I don't believe it's anxiety now. I just believe it's energy. Well, I think so, a lot of people misinterpret actually what anxiety is in the normal fashion. Yeah, and anxiety yeah. is a survival technique for you to go and do the fucking thing that you're anxious about. Like if you're anxious about you've got a test tomorrow or you're anxious because you have to do this thing like tomorrow, like that's usually a thing of like you should do more to prepare for that thing. Do you know what I mean? And we get it in education as well. Oh, I've got a terrible anxiety. No, like the, you've got the normal level of anxiety that should make you do the work that you fucking haven't done. But the thing is that there's a hand in tomorrow and I've seen how much work you've done and it's zero. And I feel anxious just because you're one of my students. It's not even my work. That's a normal amount of anxiety. But again, people are pigeonholing themselves saying I have anxiety. I have it. Um, yeah, and some people that do have real anxiety, it's a, it's an impact on everything they do in their life. It's like when people say, oh, I've got OCD, because actually they're so fundamentally fucking boring as a person. They've just actually just created something. Oh, mate, yeah, OCD, yeah, mate, I have to hoover every day, mate. Fucking mad me, mental. Should see me, with the, should see me with the Dettol, just throwing it on the fucking kids, the dickheads. It's like, that's not OCD, mate. You're not that interesting. So people have, some people have found these like things and I'm not saying like real OCD is fucking proper horrendous, like proper horrendous. People are pigeon, pigeonholing themselves and when they're doing that, they're just creating barriers to like, you know, and I do see it in some students, some have real anxiety and it's real and I'm not taking anything away from them. But the people that have self-diagnosed this anxiety stuff is basically just like, just a hindrance. Every time they get the thing that should tell them to go and work on their project, they go, oh, I've got anxiety. This is really bad. I'm going to go to bed. Which will make me more anxious, obviously. Yeah, and and what what the the problem is if you ask me if you ask me, put into a sentence or, or, or what is the problem now? I, I I was I was a slave to this as well. Um, I I still am in a little way. We are getting too comfy, so we as a generation are getting too comfy, and the 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 the, the, the anxiety and everything like you said, you couldn't have said it better. You couldn't have said it better. Anxiety is good in a way. It makes us have to do. What we wanted to do, uh, what we need to do. So, like as as cavemen or whatever you want to say, but we were made to go and hunt. So it's it's like cortisol. It's like cortisol. People keep thinking it's a bad thing. It's not. It's because it's like you said, it's survival. It's like that anxiety is giving you the, 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 to go and do what you should be doing. We're just so comfortable that we our bodies go on autopilot. We're not challenging ourselves. We're not finding our flow because we our bodies on autopilot. And then when anxiety hits us because we've got to do something which survival and our body supposed to, to do, we just think, like you said, it's just bad. Oh, I've got anxiety, I can't do it. When, it, when it's there, for a reason, to hunt, 
or, or you know what I mean, etc., etc. But we as a generation are so comfy that I, I, we don't know what to do with it. We don't know what to do with it, basically. Yeah, I mean that's the thing that, that I mean the devil makes work for idle hands, and you know we're probably like the best off generate like World War Two wasn't that long ago. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and post-war Britain was fucked. Like, fucked, fucked. Like, we think Corona's bad. Like, everyone's like, oh, it's the Corona's the new world war. No, it's actually fucked. Like, people were actually starving, like, in real life. Um, you know, and when when you... Rem I mean, don't get me wrong, like, quality of life is the driving force of, like, today's society, which is fine, and everyone should be, you know, and everyone should be looked after. But if you remove the survival aspect that we're used to as animals, as humans, that whole, like, purpose has to go somewhere else, right? And if you just idle, if you just lay idle, the, I mean, I don't believe in, like, the devil, but that will spin... And, put, and turn into you can make it into something good but if you leave it on idle it'll turn you'll turn inside that's what i've found anyway i'm a i'm busy person i'm always doing like um lots of stuff and i struggle to take those times to become like idle and talking about earning it you're right sitting on the sofa just randomly is bullshit but if you've like had a day and you're like fucking what a day i you know i did some shit you're like cool like, and then you like earn it and you're like, it's worth it. And it's just, um, so I agree with everything you were saying. Um, one thing I wanted to like ask you, because we're talking about all these things and um, um, well, there's two points. One was one thing I hear that's another in misinterpretation of mental health from um, the outside. It's like, like the surprise, we can use Luke as an example. Um, oh my God, Luke killed himself, but he had so much. Like, and the actually like the illusion that, that how you feel inside is anything to do with outside. Like that's, that's one thing that fucked me off. And I, I'm, some people are just happy and they go thinking they have no, they, they have no inward thoughts and like, they just, you know, people just thrive and they're just like, they're just cool. Like even if their life's not interesting, they're just, they're just cool. So they can't fathom the fact that actually, like you said, like it's all inside and you actually can't even heal from the outside. Like, like, oh, he killed himself, but he had everything. It's like, but he wasn't happy. <laughs> It's, I know it's the it, it's the it's the first thing that everyone it's like it, it, it sort of pisses me off in a way but it you, you've got to practice gratitude you've, you've, you've got to you've got to be grateful I, I I practice gratitude every morning you've got to be grateful for what you've got you, you've got to be um, you know the the, the, the saying the, the saying with um obviously I I, I moan because I had no shoes and I see the man with no feet you, you've got to be grateful for what you've got you you've got to be it's it's, it's, it's no question about it but I was at the point, I've had everything. I, 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 had, I had everything. Um, I didn't have a worry in the world. And I remember driving home and I wanted a, I felt the need to, my mind was racing so much, so fast. Um, I just thought to myself, I could self-harm. So that in my mind then, that's what clicked me. Like it, it clicked, I thought, right, this is real. I've got no problems in my life whatsoever. I can't even write on a piece of paper what my problem is, but I can't focus on um, my mind. So that then brought to the attention that it's not what you've got. It doesn't matter what you've got, how much money's in the bank. It is. And that's when, same again, I had to boil it down to lifestyle. My lifestyle analysis. Why am I feeling like this? And it was because there was no structure in my life. So somebody like me, Somebody like me, who obviously there's different, there's different, um, maybe different uh, ways and coping mechanisms for everybody else. There's no one method. For me, because my ADHD was so fast and so flying, by slowing and structuring my days down, took that pain away. But it was only because I started looking at my lifestyle and sorting out um, and putting everything into a hole and, and structuring it. That, that made them feelings go away. Like I said, and, and then it, it drifted from there. But people don't realize it's not like they just say you've got everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. You've got a house over there, you've got water. It's, it's, it doesn't mean nothing sometimes. When them chemicals 
when them chemicals are in your brain and they're floating around, I, I remember, I remember wanting to work myself. I, I remember thinking um, I, I could go up the woods now and like th- there is no, there's no reason to be here. Like I was thinking, like, I, I had no go in life because my mind was so fast. But throwing stuff down, putting pen to paper and analysing my life, why I feel like shit, when I feel like shit, um, why, why am I rushing? I, I couldn't even cook a meal because I wanted to be at four places at once. But now my life is structured and I've learned to slow everything down and structure it all, I can just cook a meal in peace. I can drive in peace. Then feelings before have gone. I haven't had them feelings for two years, and I battled with them for 30 years. But I was just 100 miles an hour all the time. Well, 110, I'm 100 now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's all, like I keep saying, it's internal. Everything is internal, whether you want to talk negative or... Obviously, it was internal. He had everything. Um, and we've got to start looking at analysis of, of lifestyle then. Well, wh- wh- why? Why? And you will notice patterns. But until until you go to see somebody, until you talk about it, until you actually put stuff in place, it's never going to get better. It's never going to get better unless you put stuff in place. Like I keep saying, with um, body, if you've got a weak body, um, you, you work on it. It's the same as your mind. If you've got a weak mind, you've got to work on it. Um, and it, it, it's the same thing. Uh, and it's internal, not external. It doesn't matter what car you've got, what money you've got. If you're not happy in your mind, there's a, but there's a reason why you're not happy. Certain chemicals are not, uh, are not working or something's missing, but you've got to work on it. You've got to work on it. Like I said, becoming a better you takes pride. Um, and that, that would be my answer to that, basically. But it's bullshit that this is what you've got. <laughs> Look at Robin Williams, for example. I mean, it, it, it exists. Like mental health does exist. I mean, some people hit that that position and that that low point so fucking fast that they can't yeah. that they can't be saved. You know? Yeah, you know. And so, like, this isn't this is you know this isn't going to help everyone, but people no. that haven't quite hit that that fast. Um, you know stuff like my uncle was a manic depression he was bipolar and the most dangerous time for him was when he had um instead of a manic up he would have a manic down and that was like the mixture of those chemicals of up whilst down that was the danger time like for suicide for people with bipolar and stuff like that you know and people like other things sometimes they just go so fast you know, and I completely get like self-harming, a distraction from mental pain with physical pain. Like I completely understand why someone would want to trade that off because mental pain is is worse. Yeah. Agreed. Like I completely get I, I completely get it and I understand, you know, when someone's in that much mental pain, you know, to go out and some people hit that so fast. One question I wanted to ask as well, because we've talked about people with mental health that don't basically have an issue. Yeah. So we've talked about like people that are you know, kind of inventing stuff and it's stress, normal work related stuff and things like that. How would you advise someone, you know, who's like suffered like a loss of a close family member and, and stuff and stuff like that to cope with things that are real? You know, it's not, you know, you're, you're someone died in your family. You're not depressed. You're just yeah. really fucking sad. And, yeah. and how do you, you know, how would you advise someone like bounce I, back from that? I am. Um... So I I lost um there's only I can say it's simple because it it is the only way of looking at it uh from my perspective and like 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 I'm saying I I I, I I'm not saying that I a paranoid schizophrenic could come up to me and I'll start doing this and, and it'll work. I mean no, it's just, it's, no, it's 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 realistic, it's it's, it's just switching mindset about but this is the only way that I have found that you can you can deal with death. I, I, I've lost two grandparents. I can't really say I've been through a massive loss yet. So obviously, to, to, to give massive advice, but the only way you look at it regarding mindset is, is you've got to look at it. You, you've got to grieve in the right way. Obviously, you've got to grieve in the right way. Grieving is good. It's a grieving process. But how you grieve is up to you. Same again, mindset. You can sit there and, and grieve, about how you miss her and how much you miss them and grieve and cry and grieve how much you miss them. Or you can cherish the times you had with them and you have to channel, like I said, it's going to be so hard, but you'd have to channel the pain that you've got, 
that, you, that you're feeling from the deck was worth the time you had with that person. So if you pay, if, if your mother, I, I, like I, I, this is something I'm going to go through, obviously, with, with, my, with my mother, my mother's my, my best friend. But if my mother passed away, obviously, or somebody's mother passed away at 72, et cetera, you have to believe, you have to believe that, that 72 years of having her in your life is worth the pain you're going through. That's the only way you can deal with death. That's the only way. And grieve properly and just celebrate the, the, the good times and realise how lucky you are to have that person. Um, and, and just keep... And every time you feel that pain, you need to just refer it. Like, there's, there's a story. Um, I love this story. Like, um, there was a there was a grieving, a grieving, a grieving man, grieving widow, and he went to... He went to a therapist, or a, 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 a therapist that I, I, I love. I just I love the way he works and stuff like that. Or only a hobby. And the 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 widow went to the therapist. And he said, "Look, I can't. I, I don't want to live anymore. Um, my wife has died. Um, I'm in pain every morning. I'm in pain every night. I can't handle the pain." The therapist just said, "Look, um, how would you feel if um, if it was the other way round?" And he said. Oh, I, I couldn't handle my wife being in the pain I'm in. He said, exactly. That's your purpose. So the pain you were in now is, is because she is not in that pain. So just by switching his mindset and his perspective around, every time he woke up and felt that pain, it, was, it, it weren't sadness. It was happiness because she doesn't have to be in this pain. And it, it, it's, that's the only way you can deal with death, basically, is... is Obviously, going about it down that road, every time you're in pain and absolutely, um, you know what I mean, just can't get over it, you have to remember the times you had were, were precious and they are worth the pain you were in now. And and that's the only way and the only answer I have for, for somebody who's struggling with a lost one, really. Um, and that, that, that's how I would go through it. And that's how I've advised some some people who've come to me with it. And like I said, I... It's not, you know, it's not scientifically proven or anything like that, but that's the way I would go about it and advise anybody who's going through that hard, that hard scenario or, or, or that challenge in life. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll, uh, that's, uh, it got, I mean, we got pretty deep there. I just thought, uh, I, I love it. I love it. I, I, I wanted, I wanted to, to put it there. I mean, I, the, like, the way that I've dealt with uh, maybe people that died like a little bit like early and stuff like it wasn't like like my uncle did die he died in front of me and he, he wasn't quite, yeah. quite 50 and um and the way that i did was like every time i think of him and and speak of him um and he was an amazing artist or show someone his artwork or something he's not dead okay yeah do you know what i mean like yeah. like they live on like through when my grand passed i did like a eulogy or whatever at the thing and i said actually like she was preparing me because she kind of raised me. And I said that she was preparing me for this moment, like her whole life. Like she's actually installed like everything and it was her time to go, but she lives on through the teachings through like me and like and, yeah. my mother and stuff like that. And like, yeah, I mean, what's well, like, I mean, I know that's a bit trippy for me no, um, or, or whatever, but like, you know, you keep people alive, like, and their energy and stuff by like sharing about them and like remembering. Like, I think that I think it's always really odd when like someone dies and then they're just like never talked about again. Because it's like, no, now they really are dead. Because now we can't even yeah. talk about them. Because yeah, I mean, I understand yeah. there's there's probably a period of that. And like, I don't know, my grand like raised me, but she was like a good age, and I was able to do like the. Good innings, Grant. Smashed it. Do you know what I mean? Fair play. Yeah. Off you go. Like, do you know what I mean? But having like a, you know, like a parent or, or um, or something like that. I think probably not delving into like a like a death of a child because that's probably like yeah, and it's, you know, it's unfathomable. Like, we, let's not go there. Just go there. And it, the, the thing is, as well, the, the 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 teacher the teacher of all things is experience. So that particular answer, um. I haven't experienced it to to a to a, a massive death. You know what I mean? And like like and, and that, that's what that's what I'm basing so much stuff off is my experience. So that, that particular question, um, I can give an like I said, I can give my answer, but like I said, it, experience is the best teacher of, of all things. And is that why all is that why all drug workers are ex smackheads? 
<laughs> my guys, yeah, yeah. Because they are always like. Because otherwise you'd be talking to a smack and they're like, yeah, but you haven't tried smack, it's lush. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you know, like, if you're like there, you know, like Sandra, um, you know, from Redland comes in and it's like, oh, hello, um, Dwayne, please come in. And he's like, yeah, just really like smack. And you're like, yeah, I completely understand. It's like, but do you, Sharon? Do you? <laughs> Have you ever rejected a three grams into your bell end? <laughs> yeah. No, you haven't, Sharon. So you've no fucking idea. Hey, I'm your bell end. Exactly. And that, that's, that's, that, that, is exact, that is exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because that's what I'm doing what I'm doing. Because, same again, what's happening, I believe, like I said, it's not my belief. I believe that the people out there, um, God bless his souls, we're trying to help and not relatable. I am relatable to so many people because I've been on every scene, I've done it all, I've worn a few shirts, and there's a lot I've done. Um, and especially to the teenagers and uh, people around the one of valleys and, and you know, cars, I think I'm relatable, and, and that's the problem, like you said, with these fucking Sharons or Karens. They, they go into uni, they 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 doing everything they're supposed to do, but they They've got this, they've got that, they've got a PhD, but have they got a PhD in fucking life? Like, have they got a PhD in the struggle? Have they got a PhD in that 17 year old or that 21 year old coming over on a come down? See, they have experience to come down. I've Fuck experienced I've experienced many a come down. I know exactly what you're feeling like. I can, I can tell you, I can teach you, you know, things. So, that's another reason why I'm doing what I'm doing because that's the problem. The challenge of the world. And no relatable. Hashtag fuck Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> fuck Sharon. <laughs> fuck Sharon Karen. Fuck Sharon Karen doing the scissors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So this this is uh this has gone a bit longer than I thought it would. Yeah. Do you want to do the five top tips thing for um five top tips? Oh, I think Kurt's going to do some good ones there. Yes. So what we do each guest we have when before they leave, we ask them to give five tips. Um, top tips that they can give to our viewers that they start, one of yours should be eyebrow related. What, what's what's that? One of yours should be eyebrow related. Well, they're nice, are they? Mate, that's that. That is you were rocking the mono brow as a kid. I can fucking tell me you've gone, you got in, fucking, you've had some laser work done or something. No, it's a scar, it's a scar, but I actually got the uh... oh, that's what they all say. That's what they all say. Oh, I got this nipple ring in a fight. <laughs> yeah, no, I was fucking just beating up some sharks, and someone just ran up, pierced my nipple, mental. <laughs> nah, you're a plucker. He's a plucker. I bet he's got shiny balls. He's got shiny, shiny domey balls. How can you see that leg? Like? They were, they were plucked yesterday. They were plucked oh, yesterday. There, we go. there we go. I obviously have done no grooming in my life. <laughs> no oh, shit. And I don't have any eyebrows. So, Jack shaved his beard off. Go on, fuck, bro. What the that's fuck, not bro? shaved quite off. That's ten years of growth on his face, right there. I'm going for the. I'm going for the shipwreck look. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going for the. Well, I'm going for the job as a drug worker. By the looks of things, <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're in class at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Green jumper. I reckon I'm a little bit longer. I like, get one of those little beads on there. And ride a motorbike. Yes, mate. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Let's do it. Yeah. Get it going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah almost. almost. I, well, you could, sure, I reckon we could buy extensions. You know, like um, uh, the girls the girls that go on holiday um, and they come back with, like, the braids. Oh, yeah, and then women on tour. And, and, that, all, way you, and that way you, you can just know. braids all along. You've got the braid, like, all the braids, and you know that way they've been, like, rutted out, like, loads on holiday, because that's, like, the telltale sign. So you've got the braids. <laughs> The five, I just go with um, five tips would be um, <clears throat> first of all, I, I think everybody, everybody should need to have a diary, so everybody should have a diary, um, everybody should have structure. So, diary, well, would be number one, obviously, two, get your structure, always write your structure down. So, write in my diary, plan, plan your day. Um, my best top tip we did we didn't talk about much uh, would be check in. So, a uh, check in with yourself. Uh, uh, a lot of people are not checking in with themselves. So every every morning and every night, you know, ask yourself: Are you okay? Do you mean was 
are you okay? Was the day good? You know what I mean? Checking yourself in the morning and the night. Just you know, just you know, give yourself some gratitude. What small wins, little wins. Make sure you know, were you happy with the day? What you know, give yourself some, give yourself some uh, a pat on the back if you if you overcome the certain things. So have a check in yourself. Obviously, try try the no stimulants in the morning. Um, uh, try the no stimulants in the morning, and just see how it goes with the five minutes of exercise. Um, <clears throat> instead, um, uh, try try something new. Then fifth one would be try something new that's right out of your comfort zone. So all. All the, obviously, all the bodybuilders who are struggling now, uh, or anybody who's struggling now because they, they rugby or, or football is taken away from them, think of something that you would never, ever do and go and do it. Like, like I said, I went to hot pod yoga. Um, I was the, the cold water therapy, something I'd never do. Um, go and try it. Something that you'd something, right now, something you'd never think about doing and go and do it. And you might you'd be surprised. You might find something that you've loved, you, you love. Solid. Top notch, mate. Top notch. That was the most successful five tips we've ever had, not going to lie. Yeah, oh, it was. It's because he, he wrote them down. He yeah, he ready. was ready. He was ready. This is in his diary. He was like, do a podcast <laughs> till 7.15. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet five he didn't top have... Tips ready. I bet he didn't have two and a half hours in his fucking diary for this podcast. <laughs> 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 no. like, like this is he's just got a micromanage now because we threw him the curveball. He's got the tools, mate. It's gonna be fine. Oh, I've got the tools, I'm ready. Bring, bring it on. Honestly, I'm ready, I'm ready for anything. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm fucked now. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Now it's called my fucked. Everything's fucked. I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump out the window. <laughs> Fortunately, I live in a bungalow. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so jump out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Kyle. I just wanted no, to tell you, yeah, just say thank you for coming on, brother. Um, yeah. and hopefully, maybe like in a year's time, when things have progressed for you, we'll have you back on just to have a little check in, see how things are going with your business and, and everything, and how you know how things have developed, and maybe give everyone a little reminder about keeping their mental health in check and and all that yeah. stuff. No, no, see how much I've deteriorated in that time. Gone through. No, I um, I, I like I say, I appreciate the message. Um, it, honestly, it was a pleasure. I really appreciate coming on. Thank you, guys. It's been good luck. It's been great. Yeah. Been good. Thank you. Very much. Much.